Bob Weigel here again, and going to continue in the old uh, series as I promised. Now, uh, let's see. We have today a um, very important revelation to make. Two plus two equals, you know the answer, but um, know the answer, as in, you know, this is an underlying principle. God did not make the universe in some arbitrary way. And everything, you know, when you apply logic and math, it really does come out that way. There are inverse, you know, proportional relationships in gravity and all kinds of things because we understand that these field lines spread out over a square area and as the, you know, distance doubles, so does the area quadruple. And uh, <clears throat> they're just basic things that you can, you know, draw out and figure out. And it actually works that way because you know, mathematics is not negotiable. It is a foundation thing. God didn't create mathematics. Um, God created things that fit into mathematics because mathematics are simply an exploration of foundational truth. If you define an object, an apple for instance, that looks more like a bim. <laughs> And it, it might well be a bomb if you don't hollow out the apple, you know, and uh, uh, make sure that nothing inside of it is uh, explosive. If somebody could have uh, tricked you and made it look like an apple and put a bomb in there. But assuming you've done your analysis, you can find out that this actually does fit the definition of an apple. And everybody you're communicating with, you're going to tell them this is an apple and um, you can count the apples, two of them there, and you could have another group of apples, two over here, and you can throw those all together, and it does not equal any number but four by our definitions. Well, we could just take the same apples down there, and now somebody wants to know how much they weigh. You've got a 1.37 ounce apple there, maybe, or whatever, and a one point six, seven ounce, and so on. You know, and you add those together and you get an approximate number because your balance only has so much accuracy. You can't assess the exact amount of mass in the apple. Now, <clears throat> I believe God is not a liar and God is logical. God would not tell people something that is not true. If uh, it, it may appear to man that two plus two equals five. And he goes, how can that be? Well, there's something we're missing from the equation. Miraculous intervention, perhaps, uh, here. I can't read that anyway, but I'll spell it anyway. <laughs> Miraculous intervention, or it could be we're just, you know, not measuring something accurately, and we've made a bad presumption over here when we assess these values. So let's, let's just talk about the basic laws of, you know, logic. You need to... Uh, Employ logical principles reliably, you need to know a foundational truth. Uh, there is tile under me right now. Well, that's by definition tile, and uh, I can, from that foundational truth, determine within certain limits certain things. If I uh, you know, I don't know that there isn't a hole underneath me, so I can't say that if I jump, and, uh, that I won't come down and go through the floor and fall into a cavern, perhaps. You know, I can't say that with absolute certainty, but I just tried the experiment and verified that I can do that and not wind up in a cavern. And so, uh, anyway, you need a foundational truth. I now know that, you know, gravity can pull me down from whatever height that was approximately and that I won't go through the floor into a cavern. I can use that foundational truth to begin to assess other things that I can do reliably and uh, so on. And uh, also, you know, there is um, <clears throat> something called a truth table that can be derived from that. And I'm just going to give a quick example using... Um, circuit symbols here, since that's what I do sometimes. Uh, this is called an AND gate, and it's got two inputs, and we'll call them the A and B input. 
Now these could be logic signals. You can also picture them as yes, no, uh, you know, states. Uh, if it's high, it's yes. If it's or if it's zero, it's no. And if it's one, it's yes. Let's say. And this is your output. Now the output states can be drawn in a truth table and we can assess all the possible states that could occur here uh, if the um, input of A is 0 or 1 and the input of B is 0 or 1. So those are the possibilities that uh, could exist and as we uh, consider all these we of course it's an AND gate so both the um, to make this thing high both of these have to be high and so that's the only place we're going to get a one everything else is a zero because there's a zero on one of the inputs <coughs> on the other two and that's the definition of how an AND gate works so that's just called the logic truth table for that particular uh, uh, chip or or logic function and uh, we can you know use this type of thing in the grammar of a sentence for instance uh, to assess whether somebody is is contradicting themselves uh, we can use this in all kinds of things a truth table is a very useful little tool now um, <clears throat> but once we've established a foundational truth we can begin building on that truth by evaluating other foundational truths in the context of that truth and on we go now um, <clears throat> there's also you know not only situations where you don't have enough precision to give an exact answer you have to approximate sometimes and tell people the limits of that approximation but you also can speculate usefully and sometimes you can determine something virtually absolutely using inductive reasoning and speculation uh, of a good nature. Now there is speculation that is really um, you know poorly based speculation and there is speculation that is based on statistical analysis which can come up with an answer that is so absolutely correct that it's within point zero 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 one percent of being a hundred percent or whatever <laughs> you know very close to where any reasonable person would say okay that's probably true and uh, we're going to apply this to various things along the way here um, you know in looking at historical documents you can evaluate motivation that people might have had their motivation to to write something and say okay that's likely uh, take you know your basic uh, uh, Mormonism you've got a guy named Joseph Smith or your your Islamic faith where you have a guy named uh, Muhammad who revises history and he's a single witness revisionist and then you know he gets himself into a position of being you know basically the the guy who's looked at as next to God and uh, Anyway, so, uh, you know, it's not hard to see possible motivations why a human being might want to do that. On the other hand, you look at somebody like Jesus Christ, and he pushed away the fame and popularity and became uh, subject to crucifixion. And <laughs> that's quite a different, you know, motivational scheme there. You know, somebody must have really bad self-esteem or... <laughs> And that just doesn't fit with the rest of his life, really, does it? You know, if you look at the historical record there. But we're going to talk about um, some of these things, but I just wanted to give you a foundational uh, quick video on um, how we begin to use these tools to venture into the truth. And, you know, there's also a method called judicious guessing in math. If you take uh, a class called differential equations, you will come up with things where there's really no known pathway to simply logically come up with an answer and you have to say okay well mm, fits this form kinda let's let's try that and you you begin to you know use inductive uh, guessing and and eventually come up with a solution that will work by following a, a basic pathway there that uh, is logical with in you know the limits of what you're given you don't always have the tools to get to an absolute answer and you have to innovate in various ways and that's how you know people come up with answers for difficult problems in this world sometimes